Moss pockets? Oh, I was hoping to catch you. I have good news. They found the guy? They did. What's his name? Kai. Paula and Olivia are in a crossroad in their friendship. I think that Paula absolutely feels like I don't think that you can fully understand me as a friend and as a person and as someone who is experiencing and seeing things on a certain level. To Olivia, what Paula did was wrong and didn't make any sense. My mom could have gotten really hurt. Something bad could have happened. Something bad did happen. The unlikely happy ending of the show is that Mark and Nicole end up in a good place in their marriage and their relationship. This is why people go on vacation. Even in their dysfunction, they rely on each other so much that I think both of them would be lost without each other. There is hope there, and, it, and there is love, and you can see it, and I was really glad that that was part of the story. You look at Mark and Nicole, and ultimately they remain in their structure. Quinn decides to do the opposite. It's like a parent's greatest hope and then ultimately their worst nightmare is that like this kid's gonna be free of all of his screens and make friends, but the friends are gonna wanna take him on a paddle boat to Fiji. Hi. Hi. You were on fire last night. I was? <laughs> yeah, you were hilarious. Tanya finds Greg, and Greg is this window into life again, into love and romance. But the irony is that something is not totally healthy about Greg. <coughs> I'm okay. Greg is really ill. He's terminally ill. So he doesn't sweat the details of life. He's just going with the flow. She ends up blowing off Belinda because she's found the man of her dreams. But the man of her dreams, how long is he going to last? About the business. I really need to think about it. The essence of who they are is good for both of them. But someone like Tanya is so spoiled she couldn't possibly understand Belinda's hardship. Anyway, I really I want you to know how grateful I am. And I want you to... I think she is being genuine, and because of her privilege, she doesn't understand that gratitude can be expressed outside of money. Tanya can make a mess of her life and other people's life and just keep going, moving on. Almond is definitely partially responsible for his demise, but it's the whole game that these characters are playing into, you know, that is, it creates tragedy. <laughs> Oh, come Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, Jesus Christ. Shane thinks there's a violent burglar in his room, and he's defending himself. People do bad things in this show, but there's no absolute villain, and there's no absolute hero. Everyone makes some questionable choices, and you get to see why they made them. It's the manifestation of how Armand feels about his life and these absurd requests, and he ultimately dies over it. Could I live with myself if I made this Faustian bargain where I just ended up being someone's arm candy for the rest of my life? You want my advice? I'm all out. For Belinda, there is some resentment. Like, you can wipe your tears away with a Louis Vuitton handkerchief, and that is something that I can't really give you any shoulder to cry on about. You always have more options when you have money, and that helps propel Rachel back into the relationship. The lifestyle that Shane provides her ultimately is more seductive than her own self-respect. I'm happy, I promise. I'll, I'll be happy. I think there's a real sadness to their story, and you can see the writing on the wall and see that this girl is ultimately not going to be happy but doesn't know what to do about it. It's a very fraught time in the culture as far as gender and race and class, and I felt like if we're gonna do a contemporary show, we need to touch on all of those ideas and have a diverse group of viewpoints.